energy, whether at community, family or corporate level, is a key driver to economic development. Africa happens to be one of the continents that is endowed with natural rivers and falls that are an easy source of hydropower. Today, however, the effect of industrialization has led to harmful emissions from this otherwise economic pillar of Africa's first growing economy. Emissions from firewood and charcoal, most highly preferred sources of domestic energy in Africa, continue to reduce the lifespan of the users. Agricultural activities like commercial flour farming has easily made humans consume greenhouse emissions, hence the call to governments across the world to embrace clean energy. Africa's population, according to the United Nations Population Fund, continues to grow and is clearly exceeding the 1 billion mark. This has shrunk the volume of natural forests that are the major source of wood fuel. The effect has been and continues to be climate change. The results run from dry river banks, drought and floods, among other effects. Here in Zambia, a country of 13 million people, 70% of the population relies on charcoal for cooking. The result, an estimated 250 to 300 hectares of forests the size of Zanzibar Island is destroyed in Zambia alone every year. It's massive deforestation and uh, it is driven primarily by a combination of factors. Uh, the energy is part, but there is also a very important component to do with um, uh, land use change for settlement, for agriculture, and uh, of course there is the whole problem of uh, uh, charcoal burning and uh, the unsustainable production of charcoal itself is a major concern because uh, there is a big market out there. So the use of Burma's energy sources for cooking is a major challenge that the country has to deal with. And dealing with it really is not just something that should be left to the forest sector alone. Uh, we need to address issues to do with energy supply, particularly our energy mix as a country. The World Wide Fund for Nature, WWF, was founded in 1961, and one of the main concerns was how best to manage the natural resources and protect the same through appropriate interventions. WWF, therefore, with collaboration with other stakeholders, is introducing alternative sources of domestic energy in a number of African countries. Through its Earth Hour initiative, an annual event in which cities across the world simultaneously switch off lights for an hour, WWF's advocacy for clean energy has spread across 178 nations. And as big cities switched off their lights, Africa's villages like this one in Zambia switched on their clean energy sources. I'm using a supermodel stove, uh, which is better than a brazier, the normal Mbavola, which we normally use. Supermoto is the best thing that can happen to anyone. It's user-friendly and it's even cheaper to use the pellets than the normal charcoal which we normally use. The pellets, made from sun dust, are sold in supermarkets and some petrol stations. Patricia is, however, able to enjoy her cooking due to the support of the Swedish government, which through WWF has subsidized the price of the supermotor stove she owns. The other distribution that we've been doing a lot of is um, actually going out to the high density areas, the compounds, because those are our target people. So we have been going to them, we've been going to churches, we've been going to different, you know, different, uh, we've been working with women's groups, uh, to, and we've been working also a lot with uh, companies where we do, we, do, uh, we do a demonstration in a company and then we do a payroll deduction so people can buy them. Between 2007 and 2014, WWF's clean energy projects benefited over 1 million people and over 200,000 households. More than 100,000 energy-saving cooking stoves and 8,000 home solar lighting units have been distributed in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania and Democratic Republic of Congo. Yearly, the biomass-efficient stoves alone saves 35,000 hectares of forest in DRC.
The clean energy village of Kasese is a story told not just in Africa but globally. Kasese District 1 was chosen because of um, key considerations. One of it was the poverty status within Kasese. Uh, secondly was uh, Kasese's geographical location in terms of 60% uh, of the area in Kasese is more under the protected areas. Uh, the other bit is the low energy access or low electrification rate which was around at 7.2% at uh, the time we started this. And at the same time um, you realize that there is a high population growth in Kasese. Kenya, one of the countries benefiting from the partnership between WWF and Wildlife Foundation, is a narrative that makes the human wildlife conflict and the solution to the same a record case study. A deterrent measure has seen the community today keep off the predators and has not only brought peace among the pastoralists but also benefited them in terms of education and saving on oil fuel use. We are very much uh, benefit for the light because we have in the boma, whereby we are getting a tight security for our property or our animal. We have in the house, whereby we have in the kitchen, we have a um, very bright light. Uh, we have really forget we have forgotten about uh, kerosene, other type of uh, light that we were using for the good of our children to study in the during night. Uh, now. In fact, we are so much um, grateful for all that because nowadays we it seems we are a little bit comfortable with our life. Nilipokuwa natumia taa ya koroboy, nilikuwa nanisumbua macho. Na siku nyana naleta homework na kosa kufanya juu ya kuna mafuta. Nilipoletwa hizi hizi taa sola haiko inanisumbua. The hope, new life and technology that WWF has brought about is a major mark of its footprint in the local African villages. This, however, does not come without challenges which have been managed and emerging ones inform planning for the future of Africa's energy needs.